Hello, my name is Jo Oborn and I work for FWAG Southwest. I've been working um, for FWAG for the last 17 years as a resource protection specialist. In an extensive survey that started in 2000, conducted by the Environment Agency, 3,500 soil pits were dug and found that 38% of the soils were so severely degraded that they were causing enhanced runoff which will increase localised flooding. Most of the soil degradation was associated with arable production, i.e. combinable crops, and the worst offenders were late harvested crops such as maize and root crops, potatoes. Over the last 30 to 40 years, agricultural productivity has intensified. Arable crops are more frequently grown in a tighter rotation. Added to this, grass is less commonly included in those rotations. Soils are cultivated more frequently with heavier equipment. The intensity of soil disturbance has increased with less opportunity within the crop rotation for soils to recover. On this farm, we're on sandy loams. Um, and we're going to look at how soil structure can compromise soil functioning. Here we have a well-structured soil. This is a sandy loam which we've dug from underneath a hedge. This is how soils would have been in their natural state. You can see it's made up of small aggregates which are rounded, they're friable, it looks like breadcrumbs. It's got good organic matter and it's loosely packed. This piece of soil we've taken from a severely trafficked area. You can see the difference in pore space and it's the packing density or bulk density as it's known. This is taken from the surface. It's taking quite a lot of pressure to break apart. You can see there's very little pore space in here. This would be severely compromising infiltration and the ability of the plant roots to go through the soil. You can also see that these structural units are large and angular with straight sides rather than rounded. It feels cold and it's much um, heavier to hold. Cultivations also have the effect of oxidising soil organic matter. I can't tell how much soil organic matter is in this untouched area of the field, but there's going to be a lot less in this area, this cultivated piece. Above ground symptoms of compaction or soil degradation include standing water within the field, poor or patchy crop establishment often associated with uneven crop coloration, the presence of algae or moss on the soil surface, rills and gullies within the field, sediment on the field perimeter or gateway and capping and slaking of the soil surface. The best way to identify compaction though is to dig deep and inspect what's going on below the surface. Right. The first thing I'm looking at is how we are in the middle of winter. The moisture content of this soil varies down through the profile. We can see the cultivation depth here and feel the resistance. Now this is very tightly packed. Here's the old cultivation layer. Poor biological activity. This is waterlogged. It's very, very wet here. And this will be compromising biological activity. There's no oxygen here for these microbes to work. Below is where the problem is actually manifesting itself and we have got soil that feels like rock and is forming flattened, platy, hard layers and is really difficult to prise apart. This soil here is bone dry, which is showing that water is not infiltrating down through this layer. If we have a closer look at this soil profile, you can see that we've got very dry subsoil and the problem is here, the limiting layer. And as we've been digging this, we can see how the water, which is contained up above and is trapped in the upper layers of the soil, is now seeping out through gravity. 
this is known as a perched water table. When we're thinking of the soil as a sponge, we've got a very limited storage capacity in our sponge here. All of these mechanical interventions involve cost and the message that I try to get across to farmers is to first of all identify the extent of the problem, the depth of the problem and then to select the correct tool to address it. Shallower compaction within the cultivated layer can be addressed using forward pointing tines or by using discs. Deeper compaction within the soil profile will require equipment with a greater working depth. Compaction below the cultivated layer will require deeper cultivations or subsoiling. Working depth should be approximately 2 cm below the extent of the compacted layer. Soil moisture at working depth should be moist but not wet in order to achieve vertical fissuring and cracking throughout the soil profile which will improve infiltration. Soil texture affects how soils behave. We are on some heavy silk clay soils uh, where the particles are very small. The structural units are going to appear differently to lighter textured soils. These soils have got a very high water holding capacity but are slow to dry when the rainfall's gone which will reduce the days available when they can be worked or even when livestock are being turned out on them. So when we look at the soil structural units and these heavier soils, they tend to be bigger, sharper and more angular this limited pore space will make anaerobic conditions in the soil. This is soil's cold. We haven't, we've had some rain, but it's still very wet. Um, attempts to establish crops in here have not been particularly successful. Having said that, these are clay soils and they have the capacity to expand when they're wet and shrink when they dry, which causes cracking. And that can, over time, um, help them to restructure naturally. But this can be a long process and with farm economics as they are, sometimes we can't wait. Firstly, explore if field drainage can be improved either by the installation of new field drains or the maintenance of existing field drains. This will enable excess water to drain away. Timely mole ploughing or subsoiling will enable water to drain into the soil profile but will have limited success in soils with slowly permeable subsoils with no effective drainage. So what approach can we take with these soils? If you get the opportunity to subsoil, that might help introduce vertical fissuring into the soil, improve drainage and will help them to restructure. I think the approach necessary with these soils is to do what is necessary to help them improve but as little as possible to minimise the damage. What we're look, going to look at now is some infiltration on a treated area of the field and compare that with an untreated area of the field. This is an infiltration tube, so I'm going to pour into this some water and see how that infiltrates. And this is simulating about 35 millimetres of rainfall um, because the tube is 35 millimetres above the height of the soil. And as you can see, infiltration is much slower in this area of the field. Maintaining or improving soil organic matter has a bearing on the water holding capacity of the soil. There are rules of some to say that increasing soil organic matter by 1% can increase the water holding capacity of the soil by 220 cubic metres per hectare. Soil organic matter is also important in maintaining or improving aggregate stability. The byproducts of the microbiological processes produce a sticky substance known as glomalin, which helps stick the aggregates together. This will also improve the soil's resilience to compaction. Aggregate stability can be tested by this simple test. 
The soil on the right hand side has been taken from an uncultivated grassy area of the field, whilst the soil on the left hand side has come from an area that has been subjected to intense repeated soil disturbance. When dropped into the water, the liquid floods the pore space. Weakly structured soils with low soil organic matter have poorly structured aggregates, which disintegrate easily, as can be seen. Soil organic matter in arable soils can be conserved or improved using a number of processes. The first one being the inclusion of grass in the crop rotation. Reduced cultivations the application of organic manures with high dry matter content, incorporating crop residues such as straw, or an increasingly popular method is the use of cover crops. To summarise, try to maintain soil structural integrity and functioning by avoiding structural damage and addressing existing issues. A well-structured soil will have multiple benefits which include the potential to support a healthy crop and rainfill will be able to infiltrate reducing water logging and reducing the risk of runoff and negative impacts in the wider catchment. Ideally, we should avoid compaction by firstly matching cropping or land use with the capacity of the soil. In an ideal world, we should avoid working or travelling on wet soils to minimise damage and smearing within the soil profile. Identification of the depth and extent of any compacted areas within the soil profile is necessary in the selection of the correct tool. Aim to maintain or improve soil organic matter to help soil structural stability and soil resilience to future cultivations.